can under some strange circumstances. Uh, what do you know about that? They have, uh, of course, been in their hotel rooms predominantly, but they can go out and have some fun. They can. Uh, the Lopez brothers are in their wheelhouse at Disney. I mean, they're Disney I freaks, don't... if you will, as we look at the Greek freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo. I don't think there are any NBA players more happy to be on the campus of Disney World than Brooke and Robin. And yeah, they've enjoyed themselves. They've gone fishing, golfing. It's Darvin Ham's birthday. You see him laughing there. I was just going to mention <laughs> that. Yes, Darvin Ham is enjoying a birthday today in quarantine. So the Bucks were 53 and 12 when all of this paused on March the 11th. They were having one of the more dominant seasons in NBA history. We all know that. We know that Giannis was well on his way to becoming an MVP again for the second straight season. He's the favorite. LeBron James might be in the mix, but uh, they'll be deciding that as of March 11th. The games that will be played from this point on won't factor into the postseason awards, but we're back to basketball. And my biggest concern, I think, or what I'll be watching most closely is whether the Bucks can get that mentality back under very unusual circumstances the mentality they will need to win a championship. It's going to be a mental game from this point forward. Oh, way more mental than physical. And all indicators so far show that this team is focused. I mean, if you talk to them, they're not going to talk about the food or the accommodations. Um, obviously, they miss their families and everybody has health and safety on their mind, but they realize that they are there to finish the job. They started such an amazing journey and to have the opportunity to finish it they realize that that's an amazing thing. And so they're grateful for it, and uh, they want to finish what they started. I was asked very early on if this season should have an asterisk next to it, the champion, and I said, no, this champion should have a star next to the city name and the team name. And Giannis came out later and said, this will be the toughest championship to win in his mind in NBA history. And I believe that to be the case. What team is going to have the mental toughness to fight through all the different circumstances. Nobody has played in an environment like this, and I'm just so excited that things are about to tip off and we're gonna see what it looks like. Greg Popovich, Mike Budenholzer, the Bucks and San Antonio underway in the scrimmage, starting for Eric Bledsoe, who is in Orlando. He'll be in quarantine for a couple of days before being able to join the Bucks on the court. DiVincenzo starting, Giannis takes it into the middle. And a foul to open the game. And starting is nothing new for Dante DiVincenzo. He started 22 times this season. Coach Bud likes to place him in this role if other starters are out. And the way that the offense goes with the Bucks, anybody can bring it up the court. So you don't necessarily need a true point guard in that position. The foul on DeMar DeRozan. Giannis was excellent at the free throw line against San Antonio. He had two big free throw games in his career thus far against the Spurs. He was at 80% or better with 18 or more free throws attempted against San Antonio twice in his career. He makes them both. The rebound to Dante DiVincenzo. Pass ahead. Picked off and knocked out of bounds. You'll notice the court. This is the court that uh, is located at the Visa Athletic Center today. There are three venues in the bubble. Look at the room around the court. Big wide aprons, a lot of room on the end. Players will have to get used to different optics when they play the game. John Murray committing the foul. So two quick fouls for San Antonio. And you can expect both teams just to try to feel it out in these first couple minutes because it's been a long time since they played against anybody else. And it'll be interesting to see just how all of their bodies react to competition again. Derek White hits a three pointer. San Antonio up by one early. In the first scrimmage, all teams will play 10-minute quarters in scrimmages two and three, which will be against Sacramento on Saturday 
And New Orleans on Monday for the Bucks. They will get back to playing 12 minute quarter. Sideline oh. violation. Committed by DeMar DeRozan. Greg Popovich, the oldest coach in the bubble. He said he might feel safer in the bubble than he did in Texas. Well, the report just came out a couple days ago that as far as the campus goes, there's been zero positive tests for these last couple weeks, which is great news for everybody there. Little floater by DeMar DeRozan. DeRozan averaging 22.2 a game, 18th in the NBA. Off to the right. And here's the push by San Antonio. DeJounte Murray, and the ball goes to the Bucks. Well, Brook is back. He is back. <laughs> Second in blocks in the NBA, 2.4 plus a game. 2.44 if you're being specific. DeRozan sealed by Giannis. Well, I think you'll notice on both sides here, teams trying to get their rhythm offensively because it's different when you're doing those individual workouts and getting shots up. Now you've got defense running out you. Now you're going full speed and the mechanics of it are just a little bit different. Vintage Giannis to the rim, left-handed lay-in. Well, and Giannis prior to the scrimmage said, hey, if coach has me in, I'm going 100%. Full speed is the only way he knows how to go. Three-point miss by Derek White. You might question if that is wise because in the bubble, staying healthy now the rest of the way in this sprint is critical. You want to go 100%, but you also want to be ready for every game the Bucks have to play the rest of the way. Well, it's a tough balance, and head coach Mike Budenholzer has a tall task ahead of him, but at the same time, you don't want players going in there not to get hurt. That's where you could have issues as well. So, hey, if you're on the court, go full speed, and the coaches will worry about the minutes. That's precisely correct. They will dictate how much time you have to go 100% and whether or not it is wise or not. Giannis switches to the left hand, then comes back to the middle. What a great score in the restricted area. Giannis out of the Kumbo, or are they taking that away? And this is what we're so used to seeing from Giannis coming down the middle, the Euro step, and it looks like they he picks up the foul, the offensive foul. We're so used to seeing that. Yeah. And very rarely are there offensive fouls called. Once in a while, he has a few, of course. But see, he plays and he tries not to worry about that because he's got to continue to go full speed if he's worried about picking up the offensive foul. San Antonio with an early 5-4 to four lead, 642 remaining. Pro Shop subscriber today. Get 10% off your next purchase. Restrictions may apply. Jim Pransky, Zora Stevenson at Pfizer Forum this afternoon. The Bucks trailing San Antonio 5-4. to four. Milwaukee making one of its first seven shots. Derek White drives. Brooke Lopez up to try and knock that away. 7-4 now. San Antonio. The Bucs have already gotten into the playoffs. You knew that. San Antonio is on the outside with a slim chance of getting into the postseason, and wouldn't that be something? The Spurs have been in the playoffs 22 straight seasons ever since Tim Duncan was a rookie. And when Greg, Greg Popovich first started as a head coach, these two teams are coming in to the approach of these scrimmages and eight seeding games in a much different way. I mean, the Bucks have time to ramp things up. They really, if you think about it, don't have to get going until the playoffs where the Spurs need those eight seeding games to even keep playing into the playoffs. Chris Middleton on the miss. George Hill, Marvin Williams, Kyle Korver on the court now with Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez. Bucks disrupt. Brooke Lopez knocking it away in the restricted area. The Bucks still have that outstanding defense. 
They come to the bubble with the best defense in the NBA, and Brooke Lopez is still a three-point shooter. The first three of the restart comes by Splash Mountain in his element. You couldn't uh, have a better story there. The Bucks one for seven on threes to open this game. Brooke Wade downtown on that one. Game tied at seven. Here's George Hill, possible sixth man of the year candidate. The Bucks think so. Leading the league in three-point percentage at 48% from behind the arc. And San Antonio is actually where George Hill got his start in the NBA, and it's still a place where he calls home. It's where he spent most of this time off. He's got a nice ranch down there and uh, still has a place in his heart for the Lone Star State. Robin Lopez checks into the game now. DeJounte Murray out, Bryn Forbes for San Antonio with Lonnie Walker, DeMar DeRozan, Jakob Pertl, and Derek White. Miss corner three, Robin Lopez the rebound. They swing it right back. And that is a three for Marvin Williams. And what I've loved so far is that this team is continuing to shoot. We've missed the saying, let it fly. You know what happens here with the Bucks. It doesn't matter if they've missed a couple, get it right back to him, give him a second chance, and he knocks it down. Marvin Williams, a great acquisition by Milwaukee during the earlier part of this season. Just a great pickup. Corver from the corner, missing the triple. Here's DeMar DeRozan. Sterling Brown is back. And Bryn Forbes gets to the rim, and it is put back by Jakob Pertl. And I wouldn't be surprised the next time out if maybe Coach Bud harps on defense just a little bit more, especially in transition, because that really is the heart and soul of this team. They will tell you that defense is before anything else. The Bucks are number one in defensive rating, and they are number one in pace of play. No team has led the league in both of those categories since the Warriors during the 14-15 season. And see, that rotation was perfect there because the Spurs guard gets into the lane and thinks he has it, and no, he doesn't because Robin Lopez is there and Marvin Williams uses his athleticism to get a hand on it. 34-year-old Myron Williams in his 15th NBA season. And what a season he has had. I mean, he was picked up by Milwaukee in a buyout situation, moved his family from Charlotte to Milwaukee only to have the season be suspended. And then they went back to Charlotte to spend the hiatus. So it's been a lot of back and forth and adjustment, not just on the court, but off it as well. DeMar DeRozan hit the high bank shot to give the Spurs a three-point lead. Here's Robin in the post, now Corver. The rebound taken by Keldon Johnson, a rookie from Kentucky. Played one season with the Wildcats. Outside, the three is good. Bryn Forbes. Well, Bryn Forbes was saying that this is the most fun that he's had in a long time just being reunited with his teammates, and I bet a lot of NBA players would say that. They have missed the game of basketball. Bryn Forbes shares a birthday with Darvin Ham. Bryn Forbes is 27 today. Happy birthday, Bryn Forbes. The Spurs take a timeout, 249 remaining in the first quarter. Remember, these are 10-minute quarters in the first scrimmage from the bubble in Disney World. 16-10, San Antonio leading Milwaukee. In the action this Saturday, the Bucks take on the Sacramento Kings in the second scrimmage game live from the Orlando bubble. Tip off 11.30 a.m. Saturday. You can catch the action right here on Bucks.com. Zorro will join me again on Saturday. I think before we are done with these scrimmages, you should uh, try some play-by-play. -play. I was going to say, what is he about to say here? <laughs> Why not? When you asked me this morning, I said, let's get through the first quarter of me being an analyst, all right? Oh, so you want the <laughs> second quarter? 16-10, San Antonio leading the Bucks. 247 remaining in the first quarter, working inside. Hey, in that situation, you just throw it up high. 
let the big man go get it and put it right in. Robin Lopez scoring in the restricted area. Now he gets back to play the drop defense for the Bucks. This time he comes up on Pirtle. And the turnover gives it back to Milwaukee. And you notice the Bucks are getting people in and out pretty quickly. And that's simply probably because you just want everybody to get up and down the floor. You want everybody to get these in-game reps and really see where conditioning is at. Rudy Gay with the turnover on an offensive foul. You talked about George Hill and his ranch in Texas. He was telling us very early during the quarantine how much he was enjoying getting back to tending to his various animals on his ranch. So many different animals on that ranch. They're also building a lake out there. And that's just a place that he really enjoys. He was also given back during his time in San Antonio when things were on hiatus, putting tabs at restaurants, giving meals to healthcare workers. I mean, George Hill, he once told me, every day I want to do something to impact somebody else, and he really lives by that. Five points for Bryn Forbes, 18 to 12, San Antonio leading. George Hill in the restricted area, tough basket. Good job using the body, corkscrewing right under the rim. Forbes with the run out, and that's knocked away. Watch George work. What do you think of the setup at the Visa Court today? It's interesting. You see the players are in the red seats to the left. They are spaced out. The coaches have their own area on both ends. George Hill inside and the foul committed. Well, and watching it on TV, as I'm sure we were all watching the scrimmages yesterday, it looks like an NBA game. It's some of the details on the side that are different. And what an incredible move by George Hill weaving through traffic there and all the different defenders. But you'll notice that the guys have their seats spread out. They have their own hydration stations, if you will. The coaches are spread out as well. Everybody that's not on the court and not coaching has the masks on, so health and safety is priority here. The head coach can go on the court. The assistant coaches cannot. The foul putting George Hill on the line, committed by Keldon Johnson. And I'm sure there'll be different strategies to communication now. I mean, these coaches are so used to just kind of like whispering in an ear or saying something right to the side, and now you've got that space between you, and, and they huddle a lot during the timeout. So I'm wondering if they've had any conversations about how they'll communicate differently with this setup. Under the circumstances, a good look for television. You see the Bucks graphic. When the Bucks play in Orlando, it will look like a home game for the most part because you'll see Bucks graphics and San Antonio is seeing the same situation for their viewers. Yes, with the flush. Why does it look normal? Because that's not normal. This is not easy to do, to plow through the paint, explode, and then dunk. But Giannis makes it look so seamless. It's normal for him, Zora. <laughs> You're right. Oh, OK. OK. All right. <laughs> Another one. Softly this time. My college coach used to use a saying. She would say the Staples button. That was easy. So Giannis down through the paint, that was easy. That was easy. He has eight points. Eight of the Bucks, 20. This for the lead, 20 to 18. There's that swarming defense, but a foul called this time, Chris Middleton. And that was a different angle, too. A lot of times you see Giannis attack from the top of the key and kind of a straight line down. And that side, he was on an angle coming from the wing. If you look at, at his shot chart, it is basically a slot from the rim about the size of the free throw lane side to side up to above the three point line. He scores pretty much everything in that slot or at least a high percentage of his points. DeMar DeRozan draws a foul. It's on Wesley Matthews. And Wesley Matthews is often tasked with guarding the opponent's best player night in and night out. Tonight it's DeMar DeRozan. We've seen him guard LeBron James, James Harden. And he says his mindset when he's guarding these wonderful players is, hey, they're going to score, but you just got to make sure you're at least there. And as you know, the key to his excellent defense this season has been the fact that he has defended with a lower foul rate. 
Well, and he's so good at that, and that is a point of emphasis for this Bucks team. I mean, if they have a lot of fouls, you can rest assured that Coach Bud is going to be talking about it at the end of the night. And it's just quickness, moving your feet, and finding other ways to create havoc rather than using your body. Tied at 20, late in the first quarter. San Antonio hitting half of its shots, 8 of 16. Milwaukee at 29%, 7 of 24, 2 of 14 on threes. And yet the Bucks are tied with the Spurs. So after a 10-minute first quarter in the bubble, at Disney World, San Antonio and Milwaukee tied at 20. After one quarter, game tied at 20. Giannis leading the way with eight points, Zora. He's looked pretty good so far, and he has eight points in just five minutes. Well, it's good to see that Giannis is still Giannis. Splash Mountain in his element on the campus of Disney World. And these guys just use the time off to get healthy. And you can see that they're moving around George Hill, keeping his composure in traffic. Giannis going from the wing, a place where he doesn't normally penetrate from and knocking it down. So it's just great to see Bucks basketball happening again. And it's gonna take, those shots will fall. Shooters, shoot. So nobody's worried about that. I think they're probably focused on defense and the flow of it all. A missed three-pointer out of bounds by Rudy Gay. Rudy Gay, a veteran shot creator, along with DeMar DeRozan. LaMarcus Aldridge and Trey Lyles not available to San Antonio. Greg Popovich will try to get as much time for his young players in the bubble as possible. I don't know if the playoffs is as high a priority at this point for San Antonio as it normally would be. And they might play a little quicker without Aldridge and without Trey Lyles. Well, they're sure going to miss LaMarcus Aldridge. I mean, he was one of the best players on this team. He's out because of a shoulder injury. And you mentioned some of the young guys on this team. They're energetic and ready to play. And they have every intention on winning as many games as possible. I mean, they're not counting the playoffs out just yet. San Antonio comes in 12th in the Western Conference. They are a half game behind three teams essentially tied for the ninth spot, Portland, New Orleans, and Sacramento, they are four games behind Memphis holding the final playoff spot currently in the Western Conference. 13 teams from the West in the bubble, nine teams from the East. Well, and technically, San Antonio just has to get to that ninth spot and close enough to the eighth seed to qualify for that play-in game. So if I'm them, I'm looking at that opportunity rather than kind of getting all the way into the A spot. That is one of the wrinkles this year. A play-in possibility. Keldon Johnson with the foul. And in the east, the final spot is between Orlando and Brooklyn. Brooklyn apparently has been given a much higher percentage opportunity to get into the playoffs. And of course, that is important for the Bucks as Giannis flushes another one and has 10 points. Well, the Bucks are now gonna have to prepare for potentially two different teams based on how those eight seeding games go. And that's something that's not abnormal from a regular season. I mean, the coaches are always preparing for all the different scenarios. It's the player's job to just take care of things on the court. Brooke Lopez picks up the foul. It's his first. When we get to the eight seeding games, the Bucks need to win two of those to clinch the best record in the East. Giannis with 12. Check that. 13, that was a three. He was behind the arc. And they need to win six to have the best record in the NBA, six of the eight. And while having the best record in the NBA doesn't mean they're going to get home court advantage, there's still something to be said for being the best. And if I know this team and the way they compete, they're going to put it all on the court to make sure that they finish strong because they work so hard all year to have the best record. You want to make sure you can finish it out that way. It's a pride thing. They had the best record in the NBA last season. Why not do it again? That is their mantra on defense. Do it again. Let it fly as offense. Do it again as defense and be us. So if you do all of those things, you expect to have the best record in the NBA right now if you're a Milwaukee Buck. While also getting better every day. We hear that a lot as well. Okay. <laughs> Knocked out of there big time. This is the moments uh, 
where you would see Pat Connaughton jumping up and down with that one, hyping Dante DiVincenzo up with that block. So everybody misses Pat and can't wait for him to get back. We mentioned earlier that Eric Bledsoe has joined the Bucks in Orlando. He has to quarantine before he can join them on the floor. Pat Connaughton is close to joining Milwaukee at Disney World. Keldon Johnson makes the three. Milwaukee up to 25-23, number 22 with a spin move, Chris Middleton and one. Sheesh. I mean, that, that play right there, I mean, Kyle Korver in these past couple weeks has talked about the fact that Chris Middleton looks more explosive and he really worked on his body in this time off. And you can see it there just with his movements and how fluid that was, him going all the way to the basket. Keldon Johnson with another foul. He has three personal fouls. Giannis with 13 of Milwaukee's 27 points. Giannis, of course, coming into the game off the regular season, which was stopped on March 11th, third in scoring, third in rebounding, 14th in field goal percentage, and all of that in two less minutes per game than last season. The efficiency is off the charts and it's a guy that keeps saying that he still wants to get better and at this point you really have to dig deep to find an area where he really needs to improve at i mean he's worked hard on the nice pass right there to find a slice and dunk he has great vision he learned how to handle the ball as a point guard under jason kidd and we see it all the time he sees the game differently now he sees the game so much better, and he has become a very deft passer. Three-point miss by Rudy Gay. And that putback makes it 32-27. DeJounte Murray. And even though it ended up in a score there, the Bucks give Brooke so much credit for what he does on the defensive end. And then on this play, you got to give Dante DiVincenzo some credit for recognizing the backdoor opportunity. Giannis learned to see the NBA game differently when the ball was put in his hands, and now he sees it from every position on the floor with or without the ball. And that's key, knowing how to move without the basketball, because that's arguably when you're hardest to defend because the defender has to worry about, am I in help defense? Am I rotating? Well, you're moving all around. Giannis picks up his third foul. 6.56 remaining in the second period. Back at five serve for him, Jim Paschke with Zora Stevenson. How nice of you to buy lunch today. <laughs> What do we have here? We have everything. If y'all haven't tried the new Cream City Cluckery, it's out of Pfizer Forum, takeout only. It's got basically the main thing, chicken tenders. What, what more could you ask for? And, and some tots, mac and cheese, biscuits. Jim, this is right up my alley. I mean, oh everything my. that I don't need. This is awesome. And want. I've heard great things, so <laughs> I heard it's awesome. Yeah, basically what you do is you order, and then you drive up right south, outside the arena. You call them, and they'll bring it right out to you. Uh, it's some really good stuff. I've actually tried everything. I told uh, our boss, Barry, that I hadn't tried the mac and cheese, so he hooked it up for me. I'll all have right. a review on that. But, I mean, we all miss the food coming out of Pfizer Forum. We miss everything about this place. Yes, we do. <laughs> Orders can be placed between 11 o'clock a.m. and 8 p.m. Tuesday through Thursday, 11 to 9 on Friday and Saturday. Cream City Cluckery. Three. CreamCityCluckery.com, and you can also call 414-422-6992. Get yours today. Cream City Cluckery, the newest restaurant in the Deer District in downtown Milwaukee. The Bucks lead 32-27 with San Antonio. I don't know if I can call a game and eat at the same time. Giannis inside, and one. He has 15 points with a free throw coming. I would ne never second guess your versatility, Jim. So. Well, let's try it. See if I can do a tater tot and talk at the same time. <laughs> they're very good. Crispy. Oh, they're really good. Can you hear that crunch? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the crunch coming through the TV. <laughs> Giannis had made his first two free throws in the game. 
Inside, DeJounte Murray, third-year player from Washington. He was bothered by an ACL injury last season for San Antonio. Well, and that was just a great play. I mean, you've got three different Bucks players around you, and you still find a way to get the ball in the basket. I mean, that takes focus and keeping your eye on the rim rather than on the defenders. Back outside for Rudy Gay. He hits the three, tied at 32. Well, Rudy Gay is capable from the outside, so you got to definitely run him off the line. You got to run that guy off the line, too, <laughs> Kyle Korver. Milwaukee, four of 17 on three pointers. It'll come. It'll come. Just keep shooting, keep putting it up, and they'll go in. Rudy Gay puts up the shot. And Giannis has four personal fouls. Four fouls coming in 10 minutes. Talking with Mark Davis, working the game in Orlando today. I really wonder how much the players feel the silence. I mean, so many times, maybe when you, during the warm-up, you miss the crowd. But once you're in it, your mind is focused on the game. I wonder if it's any different for them. I think players are different. I think you put Giannis in an empty gym by himself and he'll have focus. He'll try to beat himself. That's his mentality. That's his brain. Other players need the crowd. They need to perform. And we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, some guys feed off the energy while others are just kind of talking to themselves throughout the game. One thing's for sure, communication will not be an issue. So if coach yells out a play, you can't be like, oh, I, I didn't hear you. No excuses there. After yesterday's first round of scrimmage action, players were saying that they could hear everything being said by everybody, and they have to <laughs> kind of tune that out and focus around that conversation, which they normally don't hear because of crowd noise. Jakob Pertl picks up a foul. It's the fourth team foul. Brooke Lopez on the line. The Bucks have their field goal percentage up to just under 41%. San Antonio has been sitting at 50 for pretty much the first and so far in the second quarter. They hit half of their shots in the first quarter, 8 of 16, and they sit at 50%, 13 of 26. As Giannis comes out, Marvin Williams enters the game, and Rudy Gay will take a breather. There you see the players section, and Zora pointed out the hydration situation for the players each player has his own and it is theirs only throughout the entire game and by the way when they play the next game at the visa arena it will be at least four hours from now they have to take four hours between games completely sanitize everything so great care being taken as you know in the bubble jump all call well, based on what the players and staff who are in the bubble and what they're saying, I mean, everybody really does feel safe, and they're really impressed with all the protocols in place and the care that the NBA has for their health. Becky Hammond, of course, still on the staff with San Antonio. Tim Duncan, an assistant coach this season for the Spurs. Working under Greg Popovich, the fourth coach in NBA history to work above the age of 70. He's 71 now, Popovich joining Bill Burtka, Hubie Brown, and Larry Brown. When Greg Popovich has been so vocal in this downtime, so to speak, I know a lot of people have been busy, but in sort of the downtime with the NBA, and he said he really wasn't thinking about basketball. I mean, if you've heard him talk, he's been talking about the issues that are happening in our world and what it means to him and how he's educating himself and how he's educating his team as well. I mean, this Spurs team had an hour-long talk before they even picked up a basketball when they got to Orlando, and that's how important it is to this organization. Greg Popovich, always an outspoken advocate for equality and social justice. Rick Carlisle in Dallas uh, has been front and center as the head of the Coaches Association. And the coaches as a group have taken on the mantle of their responsibility as we move forward in society. Ilya Sova inside. Milwaukee leads by six with 434 to play in the second. Yeah. 
Jakob Pertl in the paint. And what's so scary about this team, I mean, Jim, if you look at the stats, they're shooting 22% from the three-point line, just about 40% from the field, and they're still up in this game. Just imagine when they kind of get hot in the second half, how things could shift. Woo. DeJounte Murray on the flush. Well, part of the reason is the Bucks have forced 10 turnovers out of San Antonio already, and the Spurs lead the league with the fewest turnovers per game at 12.3. So that's the defense working. For sure. And you talk about control the things you can control. Defense is one of those things. We've seen Brock, Brock Brooke down in the paint protecting things. The guards getting up in their opponents. So it's on full display and then the shots will just come. You just gotta keep shooting them. Well, if there's bubbly, at the end of the bubble for the Bucks, it's going to be because of their defense. For sure. And they always make that a point of emphasis. DiVincenzo drives in, had it stripped, got it back, stripped away again by Derek White. He kicks to the corner. Nice close by Ilya Sobot Bellinelli, forcing an off-balance shot. Here's Sterling Brown. And a block called against San Antonio. Derek White as Brown drives. We heard Sterling Brown the other day in a post-practice scenario, and I was really proud of him, the stance he's taking. He was asked a question, and he said, before I answer that, I want to talk about Breonna Taylor, and he kept reinforcing the need for all of us to pay attention, listen, learn, and be proactive. In his first media availability, in Orlando once they arrived to the campus. He said, when I have my time in front of the camera, I'm going to use it to elevate stories and names that need to be talked about. And he's held true to that. He's not just talking about it, but he's acting as well. I said, hey, you've had some free time. Now we're two weeks in the bubble. What have you done so far? And he says, anytime he has downtime, he's reading, he's listening to webinars, uh, looking at different articles because he wants to educate himself as well so that when he has time in front of the camera He's giving us different stories and scenarios and his thoughts have been so intentional and I encourage everybody to go listen for sure and he was a Leader of the peaceful protest You were part of that on that Sunday. Oh, it was beautiful to see Milwaukee just come together and do the right thing and watch and walk down the streets of this city yelling Black Lives Matter. Walk from Five Surf Forum to Veterans Park. Bellinelli hits for the Spurs. It's a two point game. A little more than two and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. Here's Kyle Corver. Shot clock under five. Take away San Antonio, and that's thrown out of bounds. Well, how did you keep busy during? the hiatus practiced a lot of different things play by play <laughs> you see what Jim is pushing here are they saying we got to go to commercial Jim we have a break <laughs> yes I am pushing that 225 in the second quarter the Bucks lead the Spurs 41 39 the Bucks and the San Antonio Spurs scrimmage number one on Saturday the second scrimmage will come your way at 11.30 with Sacramento and Milwaukee. And then on Monday night, we will have the Bucks and the New Orleans Pelicans. A week from tomorrow, the eight seeding games begin, and the Bucks open against Boston. George Hill inside the paint. Unpainted paint in Orlando. And this is really an opportunity, not just to get reps, but to practice different situations. And as I'm looking at the box score right now, you see that Giannis has got those four personal fouls. And I think it's a great opportunity for him to uh, kind of control himself in a setting where, hey, maybe he has a goal to not foul out of this game and you've still got, you know, more than two quarters to go and to challenge himself to figure out these different situations because you know it's going to happen in the playoffs. Teams are going to try to get him in foul trouble. And this is an opportunity where, hey, you know, it really doesn't matter what happens. Let's try to test the waters and see how we can challenge ourselves a little bit. Well, we know what will happen in the playoffs. Teams will clog the paint as Giannis drives, and then they'll let the Bucks try to beat them with three pointers. Three on the way, Ilya Sova. And what you can't expect the fouls to do is to slow Giannis down. I mean, he has made it clear that 
no matter where he is in terms of foul trouble, he's going to still go full steam ahead and play the game that he knows how to play in the way that he likes to play it, which I think is a is a great approach to it because, again, we talk about once you start to think about things, that's when you turn the ball over, that's when you kind of go half speed, and that's not what the team needs him to do. Chris Middleton with a 14-footer. Working against Derek White. And it's so nice that Chris Middleton still has that opportunity to get 50, 40, 90. I mean, what an amazing club he would be in. And we're talking about 50% from the field, 40% from three, and 90% from the free throw line. He's just about there, and those eight seeding games will count towards that accomplishment. He's only missing in field goal percentage, and not by much. He's at 49.9%, needing to get to 50. Giannis hits the net under the rim. And Chris Middleton is as humble as they come. He kind of just smiles when we talk about it. But he would also be in another club. If he gets the 50, 40, 90, in addition to averaging 20-plus points a game, that whittles the club down even more. And we're talking about the likes of Steph Curry, Dirk Nowitzki, Larry Bird. Just an amazing group that Chris could be a part of. There have only been seven players to average 50, 40, and 90% from the field, three-point shooting, and free throws in NBA history. He would be the eighth. Giannis takes it in, and a foul call. First foul, Jacob Pirtle. Pirtle. First call. Jacob Pirtle getting the start for Greg Popovich today Pirtle. with Pirtle. LaMarcus Aldridge and Trey Lyles, a couple of bigs. Not available. San Antonio signed Tyler Zeller, the former Buck, in June to a multi-year contract when Aldridge went down with shoulder surgery. Having a replay challenge here. Coach's challenge. So they're trying to argue there that that was an offensive foul on Giannis. Is that the play in question? Yes, I believe so. To be transparent, that is an area where we are a little bit in the dark. The communication that is normally available to us through our television production truck on replays and the like when it goes to Secaucus is not available just yet. So it just means we're sifting through it like you are at home, hanging out, watching a basketball game, and seeing what happens here. Pretty clearly, that's what Greg Popovich is challenging. The foul had been called against Jakob Pertl. But you see, you have to give credit to Giannis because some other players would hesitate in that situation with where the fouls are at. And Giannis says, hey, I, I got to keep playing my game. And, and that's one thing I do admire about his approach to things. The challenge has been successful, so the foul is on Giannis, not Pirtle. Forty-five, forty-one. The Bucks leading the Spurs. Twenty-six and a half seconds remaining in the second quarter. The team's playing ten-minute quarters today as they get back into action for the first time since March 11th. And I think the 10-minute approach, especially to these first round of scrimmages, is you don't want to shock the body. I mean, you're going full speed with the season, and then all of a sudden you just go to a complete stop, and your body's like, oh, we're done playing. We're not going to get banged up anymore. We're not going to dive on the floor. And then when you come back, it, it gets into shock a little bit, so you need to be careful when you ramp it back up. And that's what's happening here, and you got to give credit to the NBA for understanding what these bodies need as they come back from an extended break. Bryn Forbes turns it over. So Giannis has five fouls. He has played 12 minutes, 15 points. One rebound so far.
But the positive in this situation is you're going to see a lot of different lineups and a lot of different combinations that Coach Mike Budenholzer is going to have to use, especially with Eric Bledsoe and Pat Connaughton not being there. And that's good because then you can see how different groups of people play. So when it comes to the playoffs, it's not foreign. You've already gone through it, and you know what to expect. George Hill shooting free throws. Bryn Forbes committing his first foul. I wonder on a free throw when it's that silent. I know. I was. I mean, I'm thinking like if I'm George Hill in this situation, I've just got to just keep looking at the room. Yeah, just it's like shooting the rim. free throws when you're alone in a gym practicing. That's true, but there's a little extra consciousness when it's for a real game. One would think. At the half, Milwaukee with a six-point lead. The Bucks shooting just 39 percent, 18 percent on threes, and yet they lead the Spurs by six. They were going up and down the court, uh, and this is what we remember. All right, so the start, Brooke, blocks, second in the league in blocks, and he knows what he's doing, Splash Mountain. You've seen this before. Giannis going right down the paint, and he does it multiple times. We even saw him do it from the wing, and Brooke does more than just blocks. Splash Mountain is the nickname there, folks. And I love this move by George Hill. Keeps his eye on the rim, doesn't care about the defenders all around him and finishes. And this is that play, okay? It's not just Giannis coming from the top of the key. He can come from the wing as well. Two-handed dunks, one-hand dunk. I'm sure his teammates may say, hey, may, that one may not count. That one definitely counts as a dunk. They've got this dunk contest going. And he had the three ball as well. Giannis, 15 points in the first half. Dante with the block. We like seeing that one. And Chris Middleton doing a lot of the same, but his teammates have said, hey, Chris is more explosive coming out of this break. And we'll look to see what happens in the second half. The Bucks are up 47 to 41. This is the first scrimmage in what the NBA is calling the restart, a whole new game. It's a whole new scenario. You'll notice no fans, music in the background. Milwaukee's own DJ Shauna is there giving the jams for the Bucks, and we're underway. Do you want the good news or the bad news first from that first half? Bad news? Go for it. Giannis has five fouls. The good news? The Bucks are forcing turnovers. Biggest story in that half, statistically, may be the fact that they forced San Antonio into 13 turnovers and scored 20 points. And like you mentioned earlier in the game, Jim, this is a Spurs team that thrives on taking care of the basketball. Number one in the league when it comes to turnovers. DeJounte Murray getting to go in the paint. Well, since you called that play, why don't you just keep going? Zora Stevenson <laughs> on play-by-play, -play, whether she wants to or not. We're all family here. No judgments. <laughs> no judgments. Jakob Pertl. You put your sheets together and everything. You, <laughs> you prepared like we have to. That's awesome. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready, Jim. Pull up from Chris Middleton. Now, you've done this before, too. This is not brand new right, to you. You've right. done college basketball, men's and women's, play-by-play, -play, analysis. I have. As a former player, uh, you know, just talking the game of basketball, it's fun. I like to say we're kind of with there watching the game with you. Chris Middleton sizing it up. And he's so good at drawing the contact in situations. He knows, hey, when he's going to have the clean shot, he knows when he's got to lean a little bit. There it is. That's the second foul on Derek White. It's hard for you to turn it off and on, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just trying to add a little bit to your play-by-play. -play. No, I appreciate it. Chris Middleton, 90% from the free throw line. If he hits this one, three for three on the night so far, nine points. And we talked about this being a Bucks basketball team that didn't necessarily shoot the ball as well as they can, but still you see the score, and that's a testament to their focus on the defensive end. The Spurs trying to get something going offensively. Three more minutes with Lonnie Walker the four. Lonnie Walker there with the three. Chris Middleton digs it down into the paint. And he misses, and he's kind of 
telling himself, hey, I probably should have got that one, but drawing the foul is just as good sometimes. Stops the clock, especially in a situation where everybody needs a breather. You can get two points. This is your first season covering NBA basketball. When you think back to early in the season, what was the greatest revelation to you when you saw this level of play up close every night? Well, for me, I think it, it, it came just being around the team and, and watching their actions. And it reminds me that basketball is basketball. There's all different types of levels. But I mean, for you folks that are in youth basketball, I want to let you know, like the Bucks basketball team still does three man weave. So when your coach is telling you <laughs> to run to your spots, these are all things that athletes at the highest level still do. So hone in on those fundamentals. It reminded me that, hey, okay, my coaches were right. At this level, though, that man doesn't want any mistakes in that three-man weave. It oh. has to be precise. It has to be at the top of the game. No missed layups. Chris Middleton in the open court looking to make something happen. Well, this is his third time in a row drawing a foul. First foul, the Bucks players one. sitting in those seats, Third physically first. distanced. Third. Bit of a peanut gallery over there when they uh, <laughs> clap. Usually they're up. I think everybody is just trying to get used to the new format. A and uh, the bench mob, as they call them, we're so used to all the energy that we see from them. They're just warming up. Give them, give them a couple games. They'll they, be ready. They look like a jury. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Pick and roll action. DeJounte Murray. DeJounte Murray gets the mid range shot. And this is a Spurs team that thrives in that mid range game. I mean, you're talking about DeMar DeRozan, who loves the mid range. 52% from the field, second among guards in the league. DeJounte Murray getting to the sweet spot there. And that's just hard to guard. There was a size difference there. And when Brooke Lopez can take it off the dribble, You've got problems. Faces you up, takes it all the way. This is the first of three scrimmages that each team will play every other day. So the Bucks have one today, another one on Saturday, and then the final one against New Orleans on Monday. Lonnie Walker, the fourth three with the three-pointer. This is a Spurs team that's got some young guys, but they're feisty and they're energetic, and they don't want anybody counting them out just yet. If you are in Orlando, it means you have a chance to make the playoffs. They have young players now with Trey Lyles and LaMarcus Aldridge on the shelf, but both of these teams actually got a high percentage of points from players over 30 this year. You wouldn't think that, but they did. It's deceiving. Like, you say the Spurs have some young guys, but they've also got some veterans. DeMar DeRozan, Rudy Gay, LaMarcus Aldridge, Patty Mills, who we haven't seen today. We'll be right back. Buck's still up in this one. 59. Well, Jim and I here at Pfizer Forum, keeping it warm for everybody till it's safe to come back. And the Bucks are at Disney World. That doesn't sound fair, Jim. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Do you think, well, let me rephrase that. Usually teams win a championship before they go to Disney World. <laughs> that is true. I wonder if they'll go to Disney World after they win the championship or just stay there. I, I would imagine they've got a couple things to check off the list if they get that championship. And I, I, I would um, suppose Brooke and Robin wouldn't let them leave before getting the full Disney experience. Chris Middleton with the steel hat in the open court but wants to set things up. Giannis coming down the lane, doing what he does. 17 for him now, playing with five fouls. And you see the body control there while he's in the air. He is aware that he's got five fouls. Giannis coming up the court, weaves through a couple defenders, gets the layup, and he'll go to the line for two. 19 points for him. You raise a great point. I'll bet if the Bucks would win a championship, they might 
stay over for at least a day and enjoy the Magic Kingdom in a different way. Enjoy it the Brook and Robin way. Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? One free throw, Giannis. Giannis at the line. He's 8 for 12 tonight. 17 minutes so far. You hear the microphones under the court, Zora? That's new. They have 36 microphones under the courts in Orlando. It's almost like you, you hear the beat of the shoes. Chris Middleton coming off the screen, gives it to Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez. Nice pick and roll action there. Now all I hear is squeaking shoes now that you brought it up. Well, you hear the thumping too, right? Yeah. The herd moving up the court. Speaking of the herd, what a season they had in Oshkosh. And they had the MVP, Frank Mason. I was going to say, the Bucks have the reigning MVP, and the herd have an MVP of their own, Frank Mason. And he's in Orlando. Head coach Mike Budenholzer, really happy to have him there as that third point guard option. Midway through the third quarter. Coming to you from Pfizer Forum, the Bucks on the campus of Disney World. Really settling in. It's two weeks since they've been there. Sterling Brown will try for three. Gets it to go. They've said that basketball is like riding a bike. That's, that's really when you're at that professional level because I can tell you, if I haven't shot the ball in a while, if I haven't gotten up and down, it takes a couple games to get back in it. Well, we learned a little bit about that a couple of days ago when Giannis admitted that while <laughs> he had told people he didn't have access to a hoop or a ball or anything early during the hiatus that he in fact had a gym. We knew that. We knew he had, was working somewhere. Yeah, that he had figured it out. <laughs> you should have seen him though when he was trying to answer that question. He was really trying to think about what he should say in that moment. He gave it a little bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had that smile creep over his face when he was trying to figure out how to get out of that little white line that he told or right. that little fibber. It was funny. Oh, I've been waiting for this. Ah, it'll go, it'll go. We're all waiting for the moment where we can quietly sip some tea again. I'm talking about a Robin Lopez three-pointer. It'll come. And we've seen multiple people bring it up the floor, and that's because this offense, it doesn't matter which way you get in it. It's really a motion-oriented offense. A lot of different people getting touches. Marvin Williams, Marvin Williams. slip into the basket there. And this is a guy who is relatively new to this Buck squad, and he said, hey, you don't have to adjust to playing with me. I'll adjust to playing with you, and I'll figure it out. Great read there by Kyle Korver. Is it me or does the Bucks offense look pretty sharp today? It looks good. It looks good. I think they're just going to have to get their movements just a little bit quicker and explosive. And that'll change too when Eric Bledsoe comes back. He changes the tempo a little bit. A little bit. We'll be right back. Bucks fans, more basketball is on the way. Join in on the action this Saturday as your Milwaukee Bucks take on the Sacramento Kings in their second scrimmage live from the Orlando bubble. Tip-off is at 11.30 a.m. And you can watch right here on Bucks.com. Well, we are so happy to be back with Bucks basketball. Glad that you are with us today on Bucks.com as we watch the scrimmage between the Bucks and the San Antonio Spurs. It's all part of Bucks tip-off week presented by Casamigos Tequila. And what a turn of the events there as this third quarter rolls on. The Bucks now up by 16 points. Kyle Korver getting his hands on the ball there, and we're going the other way. Dante DiVincenzo in this 
downtime really said he had to use his imagination once the Bucks were able to get back into the gym and do an individual workouts and he had to imagine that defense was there and he gave himself a certain amount of space to work with in order to practice Bob and, and weaving through traffic it'll be Bucks ball you could always use folding chairs you could hey we always used to use those before we had a, a bunch of coaches that could work out with us and all the resources that the Bucks have. I'm sure that a lot of the guys just went back to the basics. I know Pat Connaughton was running hills here in Milwaukee. They really were getting after it. Pros never quit. They don't. Robin Lopez tries for the reverse, and it'll stay right here. Get a second shot at it. You know what we haven't seen yet, which I'm sure Robin may have some thoughts about, haven't seen any mascots, Jim. <laughs> How will he survive in the bubble without mascots at Disney World, which is the home of mascots? I have no idea. <laughs> Kyle Corver gets a three-pointer there to go, 79 to 60. And this is where, even when the Bucks have the first half that they did shooting, we knew that a streak was coming. That's what you just come to expect with this team. In the mecca of mascots with no mascots. I'm sure he'll figure something out. He's got something up his sleeve. Chris Middleton knocks it down. You can't leave that man open from anywhere. If I'm guarding Chris Middleton, it's like, just guard him everywhere because I can't think of a spot on the court where he doesn't have comfort in knowing that the shot's going to go in. Chris is up to 16 points now. Giannis with 19 and Brooke Lopez 14 points 49 from that starting front court everyone looks good to me Bryn Forbes hits the free throw six points on the night for him I think for me, one of the big stats in this game is the fact that Milwaukee has only turned it over six times. And they have four 17 turnovers out of the team that leads the league in fewest turnovers per game at 12.3 San Antonio. 34 points in the paint as well. I mean, they realize that, all right, maybe the three ball is going to take a little while to come. Let's drive it into the paint. Now you're talking about the versatility of the Milwaukee Bucks. They can score any way they need to. They any way they want. They have their, exactly, they have their plan. You know, they have one, two, three, but they can get to six if they need to. And the ability to adjust on the fly is key as well. And probably adjusting without having to say anything. I mean, the basketball IQ of just knowing what the game is giving you is a skill in itself. Right there. Giannis understands that he's got three people and someone's probably open. He's so good at just reading, reading the defenses in the floor. A lot of things in life, many things more than you think, are simply about math. Okay, go further. He sees three. <laughs> three from five, two, somebody's open. You only speak facts, Jim. You only speak facts. And Giannis is playing in this game, but you may notice in the second and third scrimmage, scrimmages, some adjusted minutes, head coach Mike Budenholzer did say he would start to think about that in the next two scrimmages. Only one player in the game has played 20 minutes or better, DeMar DeRozan. Giannis is approaching that, 19, along with Chris Middleton at 19. I didn't want to say anything. I was waiting for it to happen. The Sips team. We've missed it, Robin Lopez. We've missed it. Derek White gets the mid-range jumper. And that's the end of the third quarter. Jim, it's back to you, my friend. Well, you did an outstanding job. You sure you don't want to do the fourth quarter? <laughs> The Bucks lead by 18. Solid third quarter. They were up six at the half. 
Ready for the fourth quarter. The Bucks are with an 18 point lead. They outscored San Antonio by 12 in that third quarter. And they extended their halftime lead extensively, scoring in all different ways. We see Brooke Lopez taking it into the paint. We see Kyle Korver with the three. And it's just that moment in the game where you're like, oh, yeah, I remember how to do this. Starting to get their rhythm, starting to get back into things offensively. Giannis couldn't even see Robin there and still finds a way to get to him. And that's the moment right there. Sips tea. We all missed it. Um, uh, we'll call it the bubble tea. Bubble tea. I like it. You like that? I do. <laughs> the Bucks up 18. It's easy to find the 18 points as Derek White goes in to score. The Bucks plus 12 on free throws through the first three quarters, and they scored six more points on threes so far in this game. Ten makes to two, so 12 and six. Matt, right, 18 points. Brooke Lopez after the whistle. We get our first look at Frank Mason tonight, the G League MVP. Humble as ever, said he's just enjoyed this season with the Wisconsin Herd and the Milwaukee Bucks, and he just loves learning from everybody that he's around, and he says he's always prepared to play and ready whenever coach needs him. San Antonio gets it back after the turnover, the travel by Brooke Lopez, and now a foul call. A foul is on Milwaukee's Brooke Lopez. And I would assume, uh, in both sides of the floor here, talking about the Spurs and the Bucks, they're not using your entire playbook. Probably offensively, you're telling your guys just to go out there, move the basketball, and take what the defense gives you to try to get back into the swing of things. They use strategy a little farther down the road. Shemezi Metu with the miss for the Spurs. Well, the NBA was, as Giannis takes it in for the double-handed flush, nice feed, Middleton. The NBA tried to set these scrimmages up so that you're not seeing teams that you might see in the playoffs, and there was a lot of thought given into which teams would meet as they get ready for the eight seeding games. Which makes sense why the Bucks' next two opponents would be Sacramento and New Orleans teams that are, that are at the bottom of the Western Conference when it comes to the groups that are here in Orlando. Keldon Johnson with a 10-foot make, 87-71. The Bucks leading San Antonio. Chris Middleton sees a double team, two down defending, so he kicks it out. Johnson for Derek White. And this is Rudy Gay. He works to the elbow. Giannis able to control the rebound. And this is just really Bucks playing basketball, picking their moments, seeing what gaps they have. Ooh, Chris Middleton behind the back, slices First through the defense and finds Giannis. They really have come so far in the way that they're playing together. I mean, we've seen multiple pick and rolls with those two, and it looks seamless. They don't have to say anything. It's just eye contact, and they make it happen. If it looks very sharp to your eye after four months of not playing together, to me, that simply tells you how dominant and how precise and how they were clicking before March 11th. Well, this is a team that's very, very close, both on and off the court, and they kept in touch during the downtime. And when they all came back, everybody said that it was like they hadn't missed a beat in terms of the relationships that they have. And when you talk about Chris and Giannis, I mean, those are two players that have been through the thick of it when it comes to Milwaukee. And so they understand this journey and they're grateful to be on it. And that shows on the court as well. Frank Mason bodies up on Derek White, called for the foul. And to a man, my guess would be after this scrimmage, they would all say, yeah, it was okay, but it wasn't anywhere near what we can do. They never are satisfied with where they are. Ever. I mean, you remember that time they won, you know, 18 games in a row and they still had something to say after every single win? So, yeah, this team is never satisfied, but that's why you're so dominant because you're never complacent and you always know that there's areas to get better. And I think it's a sandwich technique because there's so many bright spots that you can talk about and you have to touch on those. But at the same time, okay, let's also think how we can improve. 
In all my years with the Bucks, this team is undoubtedly the most focused as a group. They are on the same page. They might even be in the same paragraph on that page. And I think that's a testament too to the front office and John Horse and putting all these personalities in place because all the different people here, they just gel. And they're all different and come from different backgrounds and have different interests, but they respect one another and they get along and they learn from each other and they have this common goal in mind and they're just pushing their way to try to get there. And that doesn't happen by accident. At all. That's why I said, hey, testament to. Hard work goes into knowing people and how they fit together and talking and listening and learning as we talked about for the rest of us moving forward that's what they do every day in this league they listen they learn they talk and then they craft and they have progress pretty good lesson right there exactly there i mean sounds like life does to me hmm. shabezi metu committing the foul Giannis at the free throw line he is sitting on 22 points three of seven on free throws it's been a while since Giannis has played in a game and I know it's been a while for everybody but the two games before the hiatus Giannis was out with that knee injury and he was saying that he really used most of the break to get healthy again I think everybody used the break to oh, get but, their oh, but so did the, the guy who he played in that last game that he played in, <laughs> LeBron James, right? Hey, LeBron that's, a great, James, that's a great point. Healthy LeBron James in a sprint. That's a great point, Jim. You know, he goes into the finals, he's banged up every year. Not this year. LeBron James is healthy, Giannis is healthy. That'll be interesting should they meet. Every team along the way yes, is, healthy. is healthy. Right. Giannis had 32 points, 11 rebounds, and six assists in that final game that he played in before the hiatus. That was the first game on a three-game well, trip at Los Angeles, a Friday night against the Lakers. It was an outstanding first basketball first. game. Those two went head-to-head. -head. The Bucks yes, lost the game. Points. In fact, they lost their last three games, all three on that trip. But prior to that, they had won 23 of 27. And they had gone 164 days between three game losing streaks, the longest gap in Bucks history, and the 11th longest gap between three game losing streaks in NBA history. There were so many milestones in that first part of the season. We talked about the 18 game winning streak. At one point, they're on pace for 70 wins. So many things to highlight what has happened so far. And that's why they're so focused now that they're in Orlando because you don't want to forget all that hard work you put in and the goal you had in mind. And now you have an opportunity. Close it out. Starts today. Brooke Lopez, three for three on triples. He hit that 25 footer with an assist from Frank Mason. Here is Marvin Williams with the flush. Do we add him to the dunk contest? 34 years old, Marvin Williams. Players loving that. Yeah, they got up for that one. The jury stood up. <laughs> Keldon Johnson <laughs> steps in the paint. A timeout in Lake Buena Vista, Florida, Disney World, the bubble. The Bucks lead by 26-38 to play in the fourth. Well, there's plenty of summer left, and the beer garden is the place to be. Picture this, sitting outside on a warm night watching a game on the 40-foot screen, listening to live music and drinking your favorite beer. What could be better? Join us every Friday at 5 o'clock for live music and a great time. More information at thebeergardenmilwaukee.com. What a great addition to the Deer District, downtown Milwaukee, the Beer Garden. The Bucks have a 20-point lead, 95-75. Zora, the Bucks had all those games in a row. I forget, I think it was 82 games, something like that, in the 80s that they scored 100 points in 80-plus straight games, one of the longest streaks in history, and they're going to do it in a scrimmage with 10-minute quarters. I mean, hey, number one in the league when it comes to scoring. Over 118 a game for the Bucks, 118.6. Lonnie Walker, the fourth. An undrafted player. 
Walker played one season for Miami of Florida. Frank Mason takes it in. And the ball knocked out of bounds. As with Mason. Pass fake. Mason behind the back. Nice move. He's bumped and fouled. Quindary Weatherspoon, the rookie from Mississippi State. He was on a two-way contract this season with San Antonio. Those are off now. They're just contracts at this point, essentially, in the bubble. With the G League no longer operating this season. Unfortunate, too, because the herd were doing really, really well. They were good. Under six minutes to play at the Visa Athletic Center. The Bucks next two scrimmages will be at the arena at Disney World. That will be where the conference finals and the NBA finals will take place this year. Chemezi met two. Lifts San Antonio up to 79 points. Wide open and a good look. Frank Mason finding her sign, Iliasova. Before the season began, John Horst and I were talking, and John said quite candidly that he felt Frank Mason might end up being the best two-way signing in the NBA this year. And lo and behold, he wins the G League MVP award. And I mean, Frank Mason is somebody who can score big, and he's got that scorer's mentality. He had seven games with the herd where he had 30 points or more. A season high 44 one night and a, you know he really is a true point guard and a true winner talk about coming from Kansas getting deep into the NCAA tournament Ersan Ilyasova picks up the foul he is first in the game Lonnie Walker at the free throw line you notice in this game, Becky Hammond has really taken the reins when it comes to coaching, and I'm sure that's not by coincidence at all. Greg Popovich has really given her a lot of responsibilities. Well, during the season prior to the hiatus when Popovich was ejected from the game, it was Tim Duncan that would typically take over. I haven't seen Tim today, have you? He's not in Orlando. He stayed back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Does that mean he won't be there at all? That is my understanding. Okay. Lonnie Walker. Lonnie Walker. 100 to 83. The Bucks in triple digits. We don't even think about that anymore. We expect it. And then to do it in a 40-minute scrimmage is all you need to really know about their offense. Foul call. Everybody that has gotten in this game for the Bucks has scored, and that's also a note that we've come accustomed to talking about is the way that they move the basketball and obviously you have the offensive firepower from Chris Middleton Giannis Brooke and everybody in that starting lineup but their scores up and down this bench and depth is going to be so important with this new environment ramping things back up Thanasa Sada Kumbo, the only available buck to not see action, so he checks in with 4.29 to play in the fourth quarter. Eric Bledsoe and Pat Connaughton not available to the Bucks. We'll say it one more time. Eric Bledsoe arrived in Orlando last night, so he will rejoin the team after passing quarantine protocol in the bubble. And Pat Connaughton is very close, apparently, to doing the same. Drew Eubanks gives it up. Lonnie Walker hit the floater. Eubanks can't control it. This is Luka Samanic, 19th pick in the draft by San Antonio. He might be the only young big man who doesn't have to worry a great deal about his status with the team. Some of the others have to 
make good not only in the bubble and beyond in order to perhaps stay with San Antonio next year. But Shamanich is a player that the Spurs like. Thanasis turns it over. The ball went out of bounds. There you see some of the graphics that they have put together for play in the bubble. It makes this feel a bit more like a Bucks home court situation. And all of that, the bells and whistles to the court will continue to evolve as we start to get farther into these scrimmages, some of the seeding games. So look out for those things. I mean, the NBA really has gone above and beyond to make it feel like you at least have some sort of remblances of home when you are, in fact, the home team. The foul on Thanasis. Well, the league has always been innovative in so many ways, and certainly when it comes to technology, television, incredibly innovative. And this great experiment will be interesting after the fact because some of these innovations are going to stick, and you're going to see a lot of differences Perhaps the mics under the floor will become standard. They're constantly trying to improve the game, and I'm sure that what they've done for the seating games and the bubble situation, many of that, much of that will continue. And this is not the only league that's in a bubble right now. We talk about down the road in Bradenton, Florida. The WNBA is in their own bubble. Play starts this Saturday, so I know everybody is excited for that. You have no basketball, and now you have all the basketball. Foul against Milwaukee on the drive by Johnson. Foul sets number five, DJ Wilson, first personal. Keldon Johnson, Keldon Johnson was one. drafted with the pick that San Antonio got in the deal for DeMar DeRozan, and there was a player named Kawhi Leonard in that deal. <laughs> D.J. Wilson committing the foul. It's his first. We talk about this Spurs team and how they take care of the basketball. Most of the time tonight, they've got 19 turnovers, which is higher than usual, and it's resulted in 29 points for the Bucks. The Bucks defense has been fairly sound in this scrimmage. That statistic would validate it. 19 turnovers, seven over the average by the Spurs. They led the league do lead the league at 12.3 turnovers per game. Frank Mason. The Bucks have to get the Nasus a bucket so that every player in the game for Milwaukee will have scored today. I don't doubt it's coming. It probably is. 2.35 <laughs> remaining. Plenty of time to get that done. 105.87. The Bucks in control with the San Antonio Spurs. It's been bubblicious. Be sure and join us for action on Saturday. The Bucks take on the Sacramento Kings, second scrimmage game live from the Orlando bubble. Tip off 1130, and you can catch the action again on Bucks.com. We are very pleased to have you with us today. The Bucks taking care of the San Antonio Spurs as they get back to competitive basketball. 105 to 87, 235 to play. I'm sure the guys will just say, hey, today was a lot of fun. Because for so many years, for so many of these guys, basketball has been such a big part of their routine and their daily lives. I mean, Giannis admitted that he was lost without basketball. And that makes complete sense when it is such a big part of what you do every single day. So I'm sure today was just fun. I know it was fun for us watching it again. Who wasn't lost without basketball? Right? Too much time to think. I don't like that, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we, thinking is great. We all need to do reflections. But when you overthink, that's where you can go wrong. Chris Middleton did look explosive out there today. Kyle Korver told us he was explosive, yep. didn't he? Yep, and it was great to see it on display. 16 points for Chris, 7 of 7 at the free throw line, 4 of 12 overall. He hit one three-pointer in the game. Giannis, the leading scorer, 22 points, and he played a pretty good portion of this game, this scrimmage, with five fouls. 
One three-pointer for out of the Kumbo. Always studying, watching. Thanasis missing from behind the arc. Frank Mason tracks down the long rebound as it got away. Pass ahead. And that's picked off by Drew Eubanks. Two minutes, two minutes Under two minutes now in the fourth quarter. DJ Wilson tried to keep it alive with a hard tap off the glass. A whistle stops play, a foul against Milwaukee. And this is just another step in the ramp up period. I mean, when the Bucks first got to Orlando, they simply were getting shots up and then gradually, okay, you start doing full court drills and then you get into five on five and now you've got competition against other people, but nobody played their usual minutes tonight in terms of the guys that get close to 30, if not just over that 30 minute mark, because it's still a process to get to that point. And I would imagine there was moments where people were feeling it. <laughs> Frank Mason is fouled by Drew Eubanks. Eubanks shooting free throws a moment ago. This is a player who doesn't get a lot of time in games, Eubanks. But he goes all out in spurts. He's only played over 30 minutes three times in his career, so... I'm sure the Spurs are trying to get him to maybe even that out just a little bit so that they can increase the minute load. Frank Mason really coming in and taking advantage of the time that he's gotten on the floor tonight. Already gotten to the free throw line multiple times and that just shows you how aggressive he's been especially in the open court the Bucks lead by 19. Ilyasova with rim protection but San Antonio able to score Thanasis misses a three Some of the other things that you've noticed tonight, I mean, guys running out of bounds, diving on the floor. Ooh. Did I say he plays in spurts? Drew Eubanks with his second consecutive yeah, dunk, it. and that is a massive hammer. Offensive foul, charge of 14, Drew Eubanks. And he is so massive with it, he has been called for an offensive foul. The Nas is taking the brunt of that. The, the Nas is uh, up off the floor, so that's the good news. When you see everybody leave the bench area, it uh, looks serious, and hopefully he'll be okay. But uh, he took a pretty good, pretty good shot there. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do in that situation? Somebody come in full speed, you can't adjust your body in the air. So we just hope that you know he feels better. It looks like he's may have to either come off and go back in, and they're taking a look at the play as well. But it was called as an offensive foul. Always good to see people get up in those situations. Probably just got the wind knocked out of them. It was that fall. Who? Well, Eubanks left arm holding off a little bit. From that angle, you can't tell if there's any movement in the arm. I would assume they're trying to see if it's more than just an offensive foul. We understand, and again, we are uh, at some bit of a disadvantage here, but uh, we're hearing that perhaps taunting might have been part of this. Yeah, Eubanks stood over Thanasis just briefly.
By the way, the officials, Mark Davis, the crew chief here, the officials are mic'd so that the scorers behind the plexiglass can hear them. Taunting foul afterwards. Taunting foul. Charge number 14, Drew Eubanks. So Drew Eubanks will be guilty of the taunting foul. Thanasis still feeling, it appears that he is still feeling that fall. Well, anyone would. Absolutely. Your feet above the floor and you fall right on your side. One, three, but it's five. always good to see people get up. It looks like Sterling Brown will get the opportunity at the line. It's also probably the first time in a while he's gotten hit like that. And so. Let's hope so. Right. It no doubt wakes your body up. 118 to play, 109.92. The Bucks ahead of San Antonio. Scrimmage number one, scrimmage number two coming up Saturday morning at 11.30. That will be against Sacramento. And then Monday night, Zora and I will call the scrimmage between the Bucks and the New Orleans Pelicans. You know, Jim, I'm thinking about that that hit and that Eubanks dunk, and <laughs> the Nassus is better than me because I would have just probably ran out of the way when I saw somebody <laughs> coming down he like that. He stood in there. I would have said, hey, you got this one. We'll go back on the other end. Sterling Brown, five points. Lonnie Walker leaves it for Eubanks. He gives it up as he was double teamed at the free throw line by Mason and Brown. Sterling Brown the rebound. And this proves the point right here. Sterling Brown gets the rebound and he just brings it up the floor. And it's a faster way to get into your offense because you don't have to wait for Frank or whoever is the designated point guard to bring it up. And it ends up in two points. And you catch the defense kind of on their heels, too, because they think you're going to wait and get into the offense. And with the Bucks, that's just not the case. That speaks to the versatility of the Bucks roster. They have several players, as everyone knows, who can bring the ball up. All right, Jim, so the first scrimmage. It worked, huh? Pretty good, 113 to 92. The Bucks seem to still be the Bucks, which is great news. Their defense was fairly sharp today, forcing all of those turnovers. 23 San Antonio turnovers, 31 Milwaukee points. That's a big story. The defense establishing the tempo for the game today. The Bucks turned it over 12 times. That, of course, would be at a league-leading pace as San Antonio normally turns the ball over 12 times a game. Giannis Adetokounmpo, 22 points. Three rebounds, four assists. He played a long while with five fouls. Chris Middleton, 16 points. Brooke Lopez, three for three on threes with 17 points. And on the other side for San Antonio, the leading scorer ends up being Lonnie Walker IV with 14 points. DeJounte Murray, 13. 11 for Derek White and Keldon Johnson. They say it's all right. They say it's all right. Say it's all right. Have a good time. Cause it's all right. Everybody knows that it's all right. Whoa, it's all right. 